morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through 22 with you. Today is June 25th. What day of the year is June 25th? I wanted to say it's like 176. Yeah, it's 176. Hey, I remember it. I remembered June 25th is the 176th day of the year. That means we have been reading the Bible together 176 days today. Congratulations. Take a bow. You deserve it. But if it's your first time joining us, welcome. It's totally cool. It's totally all right. You can go through and you can start doubling them up. You can start doubling them up. I would start from the beginning because we start in chronological order. We start in Genesis and then we went to Job and then we went to Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings. Well, actually we're in 2nd Kings now and we are sprinkling 1st and 2nd Chronicles throughout where they belong. Psalms, where they belong. Proverbs, where they belong. Um, Ecclesiastes, where it belonged. Song of Solomon, where it belonged. Where does it belong? It belongs when the author was alive. That's what we're trying to do. When the author was alive and we're reading the narrative of their life, that's where we try to get into it at. The The, the big, I think, for, from my opinion, the big helpful thing about that is uh, you get to you get to see where everything comes in. To, to me, now is the great time. Now is the great time because we're seeing that Assyria has attacked Israel and started to carry away um, some of the tribes captive. And we're and, and when we read Isaiah, and when we read, uh, in this case today, we're reading Hosea as well, we're seeing when that happens. Like it's happening, here's the, here's the warning from Isaiah, and here it's happening. So it's like you, you, it mixes it up. It mixes it up, and I really... I really like that. It really makes it come alive for me. Not saying that there's a this is the best way to read it, but it I think maybe to our western minds maybe it makes a little more sense. I don't know. But I like it. It's a good switch up. That's what we're doing. Not certain what we're going to do next year, but this year on June 25th, we're going to jump into Isaiah 12, 1 through 6, Isaiah 17, 1 through 14. Then we're going to go second Chronicles, second Kings, second Chronicles, second Kings, second Chronicles, second Kings, second Kings and then Hosea. And that's what that's what we're going to do today. Isaiah 12 verses 1 through 6, which is the whole chapter. And we're in the World English Bible Translation. It's uh, in the public domain so we can use it um, to our to our little heart's desire. And that day you will say, I will give thanks to you, Yahweh, for though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid for Yah, Yahweh is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water out of the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, give thanks to Yahweh, call on his name, declare his doings among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted, sing to Yahweh, for he has done excellent things. Let this be known in all the earth. Cry aloud and shout, you inhabitant of Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is great among you. What day is it? And what day is it that he's talking about? This is talking about the day of Emmanuel, when God is with us. Behold, the virgin shall give birth. This miraculous um, prophesied event, which is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 17, 1 through 14. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aroer, are forsaken. They will be for flocks which shall lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. The fortress shall cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They will be as the glory of the children of Israel, says Yahweh of armies. It will happen in that day that the glory of Jacob will be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh will become lean. It will be like when the harvester gathers the wheat, and his arm reaps the grain. Yes, it will be like when one gleans grain in the valley of Rephaim. Rephaim? Hmm, Rephaim, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yet gleanings will be left there, like the shaking of an olive tree, two or three olives in the top of the uppermost bough, four or five in the outermost branches of a fruitful tree, says Yahweh, the God of Israel. In that day, people will look to their maker and their eyes will have respect for the Holy One of Israel.
They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands. Neither shall they respect that which their fingers have made, either the Asherah poles or the incense altars. Those are the, the high places, right? We keep hearing about the high places, the high places, the high places. Like right? this king, such and such, he did not put away the high places. The, they didn't put away these Asherah poles. They didn't put away these incense altars. They didn't put away this idolatry, the idolatry, the stuff that they made. Verse 9, in that day, their strong cities will be like the forsaken places in the woods and on the mountaintop, which were forsaken from before the children of Israel, and it will be a desolation. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not remembered the rock of your strength. Therefore, you plant pleasant plants and set out foreign seedlings. In the day of your planting, you hedged it in. In the morning, you make your seed blossom, but the harvest flees away in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. Ah, the uproar of many peoples who roar like the roaring of the seas and the rushing of the nations that rush like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations will rush like the rushing of many waters, but he will rebuke them and they will flee far off and will be chased like the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like the whirling dust before the storm. At evening, behold, terror before the morning, they are no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us and the lot of those who rob us. Jumping back into the narrative, here is Second Chronicles twenty eight, sixteen through twenty one. Second Chronicles twenty eight, sixteen through twenty one. At that time King Ahaz sent to the kings of Assyria to help him, for again the Edomites had come and struck Judah and carried away captives. The Philistines also had invaded the cities of the lowland and of the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, Aijalon, Gedaroth, Soko with its villages, Timnah with its villages, and also Gimzo and its villages, and they lived there. For Yahweh brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel, because he acted without restraint in Judah and trespassed severely against Yahweh. Tilgath Pilnasar, king of Assyria, came to him and gave him trouble, but didn't strengthen him. For Ahaz took away a portion out of Yahweh's house and out of the house of the king of the princes and gave it to the king of Assyria, but it didn't help him. <laughs> so <clears throat> Ahaz, king of Judah, is trying to get help, help against his enemies. He reaches out to Assyria. Assyria doesn't come and help. Assyria comes and harms. Second Kings sixteen ten through 18. All right. King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath, Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw the altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah the, uh, the priest a drawing of the altar and plans to build it. Uriah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah the priest made it for the coming of King Ahaz from Damascus. When the king had come from Damascus, the king saw the altar and, he, and the king came near the altar and offered on it. He burnt his offering and his meal offering, poured his drink offering, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. The bronze altar, which was before Yahweh, he brought from the front of the house, from between his altar and Yahweh's house, and put it on the north side of the altar. King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying, On the great altar burn the morning burnt offering, the evening meal offering, and the king's burnt offering, his meal offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, their meal offering, and their drink offerings, and sprinkle on it all the blood of the burnt offerings and all the blood of the sacrifice. But the bronze altar will be for me to inquire by. Uriah the priest did so according to all that King Ahaz commanded. King Ahaz cut off the panels of the bases and removed the basin from off them and took them and took down the sea from off the bronze oxen that were under it and put it on a pavement of stone. He removed the covered way for the Sabbath that they had built in the house and the king's entry outside the outside to Yahweh's house because of the king of Assyria. So what is he doing? <clears throat> He's doing whatever he want to do. He's doing whatever he want to do. He's taking from the temple of God, from the Holy of Holies, from this, this, the, this set up way of worship. And he's just kind of dismantling it and doing whatever he wants to do with it. In the time of his distress, we're in second Chronicles 28, 22 through 25. He trespassed yet more against Yahweh, this same King Ahaz, for he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which struck him. He said, because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, so I will sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. 
Ahaz gathered together the vessels of God's house and cut the vessels of God's house in pieces and shut up the doors of Yahweh's house. And he made himself altars in every corner of Jerusalem. In every city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense to other gods and provoked Yahweh, the God of his fathers, to anger. So instead of repenting, he decided, I'm going to join him. I'm going to join him. That seems like the right thing to do. I'm going to join him. See if that works. <laughs> Second Kings uh, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Now in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes, according to all that David his father had done. He removed the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah. He also broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made, because in those days the children of Israel burnt incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in Yahweh, the God of Israel, so that after him was no one like him among the all the kings of Judah, nor among them that were before him. For he joined with Yahweh. He didn't depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which Yahweh commanded Moses. Yahweh was with him. Wherever he went, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and didn't serve him. He struck the Philistines to Gaza and its borders from the tower of the watchmen to the fortified city. Second Chronicles 29, 1 and 2. Hezekiah began to reign when he was 25 years old and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes according to all that his father David had done. So now, backing up, 2 Kings 15, 30 through 31. Hoshea. The son of Elah made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, attacked him, killed him, and reigned in his place, in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. Now the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. And the, uh, that, it's just, okay, okay, all right, I hear you, I hear you. You're saying, bro, it's falling apart a little bit. It feels like it. It feels like it a little bit. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea, the son of Elah, began to reign in Samaria over Israel for nine years. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, yet not as the kings of Israel who were before him. Shalmaneser, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against him, and Hoshea became his servant and brought him tribute. Uh, I think we're reading verse four as well. Yeah, here we go. Verse four. The king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and offered no tribute to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria seized him and bound him in prison. Now, in the midst of this, in the midst of this, we get Hosea 1.1. Yahweh's word came to Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When Yahweh spoke at first by Hosea, Yahweh said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of prostitution and children of unfaithfulness, for the land commits great adultery forsaking Yahweh. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Yahweh said to him, call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel on the house of Jehu and will cause the kingdom of the house of Israel to cease. It will happen in that day that I will break the bow of Israel, break the bow. I'm going to say bow, bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then he said to him, Call her name Lo Ruhamah, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, that I should in any way pardon them. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah, and will save them by Yahweh their God, and will not save them by bow, sword, battle, horses, or horsemen. Now when she had weaned Lo Ruhamah, she conceived and bore a son. He said, Call his name Loami, for you are not my people, and I will not be yours. Yet the number of the children of Israel will be as the sand of the sea, which can't be measured or counted. And it will come to pass that, in the place where it was said to them, 
you are not my people. They will be called sons of the living God. The children of Judah and the children of Israel will be gathered together and they will appoint themselves one head and will go up from the land for great will be the day of Jezreel. So this lo ruhama means not loved and lo ami means not my people. Say to your brothers, my people, this chapter two, and to your sisters, my loved one, contend with your mother. Contend, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her put away her prostitution from her face and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and make her bare as in the day that she was born, and make her like a wilderness and set her like a dry land and kill her with thirst. Indeed, on her I will have no mercy, for they are children of unfaithfulness, for their mother has played the prostitute. She has conceived them, she who conceived them, has done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers who give me bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns and I will build a wall against her that she can't find her way. She will follow after her lovers, but she won't overtake them. She will seek them, but won't find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then it was better with me than now. For she didn't know that I gave her the grain, the new wine and the oil and multiplied to her silver and gold, which they used for Baal. Therefore, I will pack my grain in its time. I will take back my grain in its time and my new wine in its season and will pluck away my wool and my flax, which should have covered her nakedness. Now I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and no one will deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause all her celebrations to cease, her feasts, her new moons, her Sabbaths and her solemn assemblies. I will lay waste her vines and her fig trees about which she has said, these are my wages that my lovers have given me and I will make them a forest, and the animals of the field shall eat them. I will visit on her the days of the bales, to which she burned incense, when she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and went after her lovers, and forgot me, says Yahweh. Until 2.13, that's it. That is the end. I know I want to keep reading. I want to keep reading. I, I am struck by the imagery, which you probably are too, and... This whole, I can't help thinking about it, and I'm going to say it, and uh, you might disagree with me, and you might be like, Jake, you crazy, and that's fine. That's cool. I get it. But remember when the Jews asked Jesus about marriage. They asked him about marriage, right? And they're like, um, and and, um, from the beginning, right, he, he says it was... No, about, about divorce. Like there's one man, one woman. That's the nature of marriage. That's it. That is it. That is it. Now, of course, we've got sin that has invaded right our, our existence. But when we start to think and we start to examine this nature of marriage, the nature of marriage, and Paul gets into this. Remember, he says it's a mystery. He says it's like it's a picture of Christ and the church. It is a picture of God and his people. That's what it's a picture of. So we are acting out when we get married. It's more than it's more than what we know, but we are acting out this story of um, God and his people, providing for his people, forgiving his people, loving his people, taking care of his people, and his people submitting to their Lord, obeying their Lord. I don't know. I don't know all the details of it. I don't. I don't. I don't. But you can hit me up if you want to. Not many at gmail.com. That's fine with your thoughts on it. But here's the deal. Like I, I, I talk to some friends, people, homies, and they're like, you know, I'm looking for, um, or, you know, my wife doesn't love me or, or this, or how long should I hang out? How, when, what, what are the reasons for divorce? When can I get divorced? Obviously I think the Bible gives you right. I mean, n- n- license to get divorced for adultery. I think abandonment and, a, and you could argue abuse, right? So adultery, abuse, abandonment, those three, the three A's, right? The three A's people will say that the three A's to get divorced. And I'm not saying, uh, and this isn't a um, counseling session for your particular scenario. It's not, it's, it's, it's examining our lives in light of what 
uh, is right. So Yahweh's word came to Hosea and he says, go take for yourself a wife of prostitution. He did not say, he did not say he was a prophet from God. He did not say, yo, you need to go find your soulmate. I find that fascinating because it changes the perspective of our lives, right? We have got it set up that, you know, marriage and happiness and sexual fulfillment is kind of a big deal. And it is. And I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's not a big deal, but it's not the biggest deal. It's not the biggest deal. Obedience is the biggest deal. Obeying God is the biggest deal. Your relationship with God is the biggest deal. And this is where maybe it hurts a little bit, where we spend, like, sometimes you spend, I don't know, I'm unhappy. I'm, I, I get it. I'm not, and I'm not, again, I'm not giving you specific guidance for, for your specific situation. What I'm saying is this, in principle, in principle, your relationship with God is more important than your relationship with another human. In principle. And also, in principle, marriage is supposed to be a picture of Christ and his church, God and his people, that is acted out by his people. One man, one woman. And they are acting out the nature of this relationship. That's it. I know. I know. I get it. I get it. It's sometimes it's a little hard to understand. And sometimes it's a little bit uh, frustrating. You're like, well, I'd rather not like, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. I, I want to pursue happiness, happiness above all things, pleasure above all cost or at all cost, yeah, but it doesn't work. That's the thing. It doesn't work. It doesn't satisfy. Right. If it worked, it would be one thing. We could have a little more serious conversation about it, but it doesn't work. Now, doesn't work now you do need right you do need some uh, uh, intimate relationship friendships different people have different personalities and they need other people a little bit more or less whatever i'm not getting into that i'm not getting into just for you just these two concepts these over over i don't know general concepts all right enough of that thanks for letting me ramble appreciate you let's get into praying for dick and Rosalind albright they are missionaries and they want to be able they are looking to return to Malawi in August after a three-year hiatus. Uh, the team and the pastors, um, the, oh, they're, they're, they're going back in August for a week-long workshop. They're going to start off with a bang. They're going to start off with a bang. Uh, and then they want to be able to head back to the Philippines as well and for the travel restrictions to be lifted. And then for Rosalind healing, she has a rare brain disease and it is a deteriorating condition. So we want to lift her up and uh, for healing and sustaining, uh, sustaining power. So Dick and Rosalind Albright are heading back to Malawi uh, and they're going to start off with this week long, week long workshop. And then the, the organization they're with, they want to do more. They want to expand more. So let us pray for them. Again, if you're driving, operating heavy machinery, whatever you're doing, keep your eyes open, pay attention to what you're doing. If you're not, of course, you can close your eyes, bow your, bow your knees, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Give us wisdom. Some things are hard to find, hard to follow. Uh, the narrative sometimes are a little hard to follow. Going back and forth, reading about Hezekiah, reading about Ahaz, uh, reading about uh, the king of Assyria, and reading about um, Judah, Samaria, Israel reading about places that I've never been to. And sometimes it's hard to visualize and sometimes it's hard to see. Reading about Hosea, uh, one of your prophets whom you told to take a wife of prostitution. And it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. I want to be happy in my marriage. And that doesn't seem like the path to happiness for Hosea. But you're, you're doing something and you're doing things that I don't understand. Um, and you gave word to Isaiah and some of the things that he wrote, I don't understand and we don't understand and uh, we seek to seek you for wisdom. Would you please make these things clear to us in your time? Um, would you please bless our dedication to your word? Uh, we are 176 days in, not because we're trying to earn your favor, by reading your, the Bible, not because we're trying to pat ourselves on the back or puff ourselves up, 
because we, uh, we we're because we're in your word. We just we want to be faithful servants. We want to know you. We want to be like you. We want to know, yeah. We want to know you. So we're reading your word, and and we want to obey you, and we pray that you would please favor this, and that you would have mercy on us, and give us wisdom, give us understanding, and bless what we're doing. Bless our reading. Bless our pursuit of you, because you're who we're pursuing, and we love you, and we thank you for your mercies, for your kindness, for your grace to us, um, for your provision. You've given us all things, everything that we have. You've done it. Uh, like Israel here, they turn to these false gods for their own. Um, when, when they were talking about the oil that they oil that they had received, uh, bread and water, wool and flax, oil and drink, those things, we know that they come from you. And we've been ungrateful. Forgive us. We've looked to our own means. Like we didn't raise up little idols and burn incense to them, but we thought of them. Eh, I did that. I did that. I, I earned this. I built this. I'm the one. I'm okay. I'm good. And my my strength, my wisdom, uh, my abilities have given me this. And would you please forgive us? We know that it comes from you. We acknowledge it comes from you. And then we pray that you would please continue. Like we repent and we come back and, and we know it's from you. And we, we need more because we want, we, we want more. We need more. Um, but we want our daily bread. And we pray that you would please provide that for us and have mercy on us. We also bring to you Dick and Rosalind Albright and pray for their return to Malawi in August and that you would have mercy on them, prepare the work for them, prepare their travels for them, um, especially as they're trying to get to the Philippines as well and for the, some of the travel restrictions to be lifted. Give them grace to prepare for the week-long workshop that it would be a tremendous outpouring of your spirit and your grace and your wisdom and the and yeah the, the holy spirit would take charge and empower the the pastors that are meeting and the missionaries that are going including dick and roslyn and also that you would heal roslyn's brain that you would heal this deteriorating condition in her and that you would give her many more years of faithful service to you and that um uh, dick would be uh, a, a source and a pillar of strength for her during this time that he would love her, that he would pour himself out for her as Christ poured himself out for his church. And then Lord, for our marriages that they would be pictures of your love for the church that, um, husbands would, would love their wives and absolutely empty themselves as our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ emptied himself upon the cross for his purchased possession, for his people, the husbands, that we would be like that, and that wives, we would sub, uh, submit and, um, and, and obey and be uh, receptive and be uh, a blessing to our husbands, Lord. And, um, and we thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. We thank you for all the great things that you've done and pray that you would please continue to do more in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Show notes at notmanynoble.com. If you've got any questions or you've got any prayer requests, hit me up, notmanynoble at gmail.com or you just want to say hi, whatever you want to do. You can hit me up. Thank you. And I'll talk with y'all tomorrow.